Uh, so this is called The Art of Relationships, and um, I am currently the talent strategy partner at Scopely in Los Angeles, and I will go into that a little later, um, but really, this is about casino, and I spent nine years as a casino operations executive in Las Vegas, working as an executive casino host and a player development manager. So. I actually did this in tier two and three level properties. And the reason that I bring that up is I didn't have the big brand names of Caesars or MGM to get customers to come to my property. So it was really important to build the relationship and to have these customers want to come back to spend time with me or at my property. Um, you know, we did that by creating really unique experiences. and. What I want to try to get across as we're becoming more technological and social and mobile um, is that it's not really about having hotel comp rooms or, or money. It's really about making these unique touch points. Um, how do you compete with the glitz and glam? You actually have to build a connection with people. So, The definition of relationship management by Investopedia, <laughs> a strategy employed by an organization in which a continuous level of engagement is maintained between the organization and its audience. So what does that actually mean? Um, well, with Scopely, and like James mentioned, um, the CEO being very relationship driven, one of the reasons that I took this job was because it was taking all the years of experience that I had with high level guests and customers and kind of building that into our talent strategy and really connecting with high level people in our industry, knowing who is who, where they came from, what their background and experience is, and what the next step or the next chapter looks like for them and really having an interest level. And it's not always about taking a job today or tomorrow or in a month, but really aligning synergies for those people to become either part of Scopely or partnered with Scopely down the line. So the fact that he was so invested in wanting to connect with the best people really made that an attractive offer for me. So the handshake slide, and the reason I bring this up, and this was a really interesting topic at dinner last night, um, what does the handshake really mean to you? Does this look like the closing of a deal, uh, an agreement that was made, um, or is this the beginning? So in my world, this has been the beginning of a beautiful friendship, right? Something that's starting and um, hopefully growing from here. And so I think that one of the things that businesses need to do, and especially dealing with customers, is looking at every handshake as the opening to something rather than the end of a deal. So I think we're all here to hear about cool Las Vegas stories. And uh, hopefully I can you know, tell you what's really true and things that you only see on TV, um, things that don't really exist. Um, but I kind of broke it down into a fun little acronym of fame. So. Here's what I learned in my nine years of casino. F is definitely the first impression. And this is really important. You know, you only get the one chance, so you better make it good. With the casino world, we have very limited data. Usually, we're going out to speak to somebody that's playing a table game that all we know is that they're unknown and that they're betting a certain dollar amount and you have maybe 90 seconds to two minutes to go out there and really make an impression and make somebody want to engage with you further. It's really hard to find out why somebody is there, why they're standing there. Are they staying with you? Where are they staying if they're not staying with you? Or going up to a slot customer who is uncarded and maybe they're trying to stay unknown and really getting them to want to be a part of your property and your casino program. I think the, the benefit for social and you know, mobile games is that you have so much data, right? You know who these customers are. You know a lot about them. 
And so when you make that first impression, it's going to have to be really big because I think customers are very savvy and they know this data is being collected on them. And so they're going to want to have a really unique touch point when that first impression is made, that first approach is made. The second is A, which stands for a couple of things. Um, your audience, your approach, and the ability to adapt. So again, social and mobile know their audience um, very well. And there's a lot of things that are already given to you as far as data before you ever have to go and make an approach. In the land-based world, it took a lot of getting to know people. And it took a lot of time to really understand what people wanted and what they were really looking for in an experience. And then you plan your approach accordingly. So if you know that somebody comes to your game at a certain time or that they you know, like these certain patterns or whatever it is, you want to make sure that you're appealing to that when you approach them. And then you know, being able to adapt your style. I've always let customers kind of control the flow of communication, and I've adapted my style to them. Um, you know, going back kind of old school, right? Like, you really need to talk to people. And that's how we started. We started, we have the face-to-face -face interaction in the casino, which is an element that doesn't exist in social and mobile. So how do you have those really personal conversations? You, you need to have an out bound call system. You need to actually be reaching out to these customers and communicating to them, not in a canned type of communication style. Uh, a pop-up message that everybody is getting seems very impersonal, and they will pick up that it's impersonal. So eventually, you know, with my customers, it got to a point where, yes, we were talking, and then if they were emailing me, I was emailing them back with the information. It got to a point where you know, I could send a text on any given day and just say, hey, how are you doing? I was thinking about you. When are we going to see you again? And get to that really kind of common relationship where we were kind of communicating more as a friendship than a customer in a business. M is memorable, right? And I, Definitely think that's easier said than done. Um, again, you only have a few minutes to make an impression, and how do you, how do you become memorable to these people? Um, I did work with a guy who uh, had like this flock of seagulls haircut, and to me, that was very memorable. I don't know if it was exactly what you'd want to be rem remembered for, um, but I think that the unique touch points are what make things memorable. So if you know that a customer is dieting, I would create a special gift basket for their room that was full of like healthy food and nuts and things that would appeal to only that person. Or if a customer brings their family, their kids, I would create baskets for their kids so they would have a really fun experience to make the whole trip a really memorable experience. I know we had one customer. She was a, a local million dollar a year video poker player. And she absolutely loved NASCAR. Um, so we had a NASCAR event. Um, we have the race in Las Vegas. And the property had already had drivers coming in for an autograph session. So we had a line absolutely out the door around the casino. We had a VIP line, and then we had this woman come in. So as soon as she came up to the property, we ushered her through everyone, brought her to the beginning of the line, brought her around the table, right? And we put a chair right next to her favorite driver, who was Casey Kane, if anybody follows NASCAR. Um, and for 90 minutes, she got to sit next to Casey Kane and just talk and he was signing autographs. He signed a couple of extra things for her. But at the end of the day, this cost nothing. This was no more of an expense than what we had already planned for all of those people that were coming in for the autograph session. But for her, it went so far. It, it just completely resonated with her. And she was very loyal to the property. And you think about, there's 
a video poker machine every 20 steps down the strip. And there's tons of them, right? And you know, for her to continue to come to our property to play just showed her, her loyalty and her appreciation for us doing that for her. The last one, E, is for expectations. And I've heard this thrown around a lot. And I think that when we talk about expectations, we talk about the customer's expectations. But really, what I've learned is that you as the business, as the casino, you need to set the expectations for the customer. So there's never a question. So we had a discussion the other night about, can you really make a customer pay for it or play for it? And I choose the play for it. Um, I think that I would always tell customers that you can have anything you want within legal uh, measures as long as you play for it. And I will tell you exactly what you need to do to get whatever it is that you want comped off. So if you want concert tickets, if you want your airfare reimbursed, you want a helicopter trip to the Grand Canyon with a champagne lunch, we'll tell you exactly what you need to get that. And then there's no gray area. So there's never going to be this discussion about, well, why, why is this on my bill? Why am I paying for it? Customers are really savvy and they, they know that they're going to play for the experience. And when you get them to pay for the experience, I think it's more of a, a one-time transaction then. And you will find that paying for it is actually a lower dollar amount than playing for it. So with being very upfront with our expectations, we were able to exceed the customer expectations. Um, you know, casinos use a theoretical value. Um, Obviously, it's a little different in social and mobile. So I think that whatever that determination is, whatever that dollar amount threshold that you're looking to meet is, you figure what the reinvestment on the customer is. If somebody spends $10,000 a week in your game, what are really creative ways that you can give them $1,000? Do you send them something? Do you send them to a huge event in their local neighborhood? Do you get them you know, sports tickets? I think there's so many different creative ways to look at rewarding your customers and just giving them a unique experience and thanking them for what they're doing, which is engaging in your game. So that is about it. I, I imagine that there might be some questions about what happens in Vegas, so I kind of left that open. Um, there's probably a million stories about what customers have asked for and what we will do. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all about having these unique one-on-one -on -one experiences. Thank you so much, Christina. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone want to know what happens in Vegas? <laughs> all right, got one for you here. Stays in Vegas. <laughs> Actually, I have a question that's kind of the exact opposite end of the spectrum than what happens in Vegas. It's how do you uh, scale what you can do at a casino in terms of real people, real handshakes, real footfall against the millions of people that log into a mobile game? Like, what kind of customer support team sizes do you think is a reasonable expectation to have that type of deep relationship with an online casino player? Well, I mean, we use the 80-20 rule in casino, so 20% of the database makes up the 80% of the revenue, and of that 20%, you're gonna break up those relationships to your team. Um, I think there was a study done that said that you can only have personal relationships with about 500 people, so they better be the best 500 people. Um, but the paying audience in social casino is a lot lower of a percentage, and of that low percentage, what dollar threshold are you really wanting to reward? And I think that you'll find that that's not a really unmanageable number. And so if you put a team in place, I think it's up to the business to decide how interactive they want to be. Um, I had um, a client that I work with when I was doing executive recruiting and consulting for Social Casino that their people kind of have some anonymity. Um, they, they interact, but they don't really know who those people are. That's one way. Um, I mean, obviously, being in the casino, we were very exposed. Most of my customers had my cell phone number. Um, 
I would get calls at like two, three in the morning. <laughs> Nobody cares about time differences. Um, they, you know, they just feel like they could reach out. And for me, that was okay. That was kind of part of the job. Um, if you build something like that, I think that the people element is really smart. I mean, if you do the research on who your customers are and you can kind of group and segment on you know, what they like, do you plan a really cool event? And do you send somebody from your organization to represent that event? I think when you put a face to the, to the business, there's always gonna be an added level of loyalty. I, I would just add to that real quick. Uh, I'm on the board of Idle Games and we had Fresh Deck Poker, uh, which we sold to GSN last year. <clears throat> and so I, it's, it's probably cool if I uh, tell you this because it's two years old now at this point, but um, we had a, our VIP level was people who spent at least a thousand dollars in the app. Uh, and I remember we threw a party when we, we hit our 250th VIP. So, you know, you, you start doing the math and you say, you know, okay, that's, that's quite a bit of money. But what's amazing is when people actually spent a thousand dollars and got into the VIP level, we started pouring special attention. We would call them if they didn't log into the app. You know, we had a, we had a concierge that would spend time with them. And uh, what we found is it usually took less than 30 days to get them over the $10,000 mark. So having that personal relationship really counts. It's just limiting it to a, a, some kind of a threshold that makes sense. And 250 is definitely manageable by one person from what we found, so. Yeah. Other questions? It's raining outside, guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Um, about the expectation slide, um, it's, it's something that I've seen come up a couple of times. Um, some games have this sort of um, VIP level. Um, once you've spent X amount of money, you, um, uh, whenever you buy something, you get more, or you get some kind of like extra benefits in the game. And to me, it often sort of like opens up this recurring discussion of, do you want to tell your whales that they're whales? Um, and how do you manage that in a casino? Like, how, how open do you want to be with people that they are spending large amounts of money? So in the casino, we are very open with the amount of money or time. Um, again, we use theoretical in the casino. So a theoretical calculation uh, has a certain reinvestment percentage versus an actual loss. Um, <clears throat> I think with our whales, you had to know how to get there. But then once you get there, there's such a huge discrepancy between your, your lowest black card member and your highest black card member, right? And I don't think that you share maybe those details, but once somebody gets to a level, like I said, you know, you could have whatever you want as long as you're willing to play for it. And so if they have no idea, if, if they play four hours here and they have to play six, then they should know that. They should know how to get it, what they want. I guess in a, in a social or mobile game, you would be able to say, hey, you log in for 20 minutes on your morning commute to work, but for one week, if you find an extra five minutes per day, you're going to unlock like this huge jackpot or something. Or you know, if there is an event in the person's city, then you, you know, set up a monthly program for them where if you do X amount of you know, purchases in the month, we'll have two front row tickets to whatever band <laughs> they're interested in or whatever event it is. I think that it's certainly on the responsibility of the customer to, to kind of get what they want, and they like to have that ownership and that control of their experience. Good question. Any other questions for Christina? No, we're uh, done. I, I, no, I have a last question for you. <laughs> uh, so we've seen the popularity of some of the things that you talk about in relationships as regards the customer with like My Vegas. Um, you know, they've they've built almost they they've made it a very upfront system of of accumulating points and being able to spend those points. Do you recommend that kind of um, sort of broad, well published relationship? I mean, it's almost like collecting the you know tabs off cigarettes to get a free coat or whatever. Or do you think that you should have a very personal relationship where you're saying, "Hey, Christina, you're you're this close to being in our VIP, and then this is what it's going to bring to you." I personally think the My Vegas model is very resemblant to just the players club that exists in a casino, right? The players club is easily accessible to everybody. It has a reward level for everyone. You know, we're thanking you by giving 
you giving us your information, we want to thank you. And we want to send you different promotions, right? And so that's kind of what My Vegas does. It appeals to all of their customers. But there is a certain level that you get to that it's really extending beyond your, your card now. And it's really about having that one person that goes out of the way to make your trip an amazing experience. And so I think what they haven't captured is how to really connect with those people in very personal ways. They're giving a lot of rewards, you know, rewards that might not ever get used because that's not my interest. Um, but they haven't really connected in saying that, you know, you are our number one player, and as our number one player, we want to make you really, you know, love our brand. And I found that people really love swag, you know, and, and people are responsive to it. And, uh, you know, there's that sense of kind of connection, you know, when you're wearing your, your logo jacket in Vegas, and everybody knows that you're that customer of that casino. So I think that um, My Vegas has a great model, but it's not the high level relationship model. Excellent. All right. Okay. Thank <laughs> you so much, Christina.